It's really frustrating when you need to use a level 2 charging station and you arrive at your destination, like a hotel, and the only charging station available is for a Tesla, but you don't own a Tesla. Fortunately, there are solutions, and this Electron Tesla to J1772 adapter is one of them. My name is Andre Lawrence, and this is Evolution. Electron originally reached out to me asking me if I wanted to test the Supercharger 2 CCS combo adapter and I said sure, and that's on the way. But then they asked me if there was anything else I wanted to test and because the situation I mentioned in the intro isn't something that I made up, it actually has happened to me a few times, I said hey, do you have a NACS or Tesla to J1772 adapter available? And they said yep. So they sent this to me for free, and I wanted to give you full disclosure, I got this for free, but that doesn't mean that if this is total garbage, I'm not going to tell you. I always judge things on whether their performance and quality are good, not on what they cost. In case you're wondering what a Tesla or NACS, North American Charging Standard, to J1772 adapter is, it's an adapter that lets you use your non-Tesla EV with a Tesla destination charger. That includes the Level 1 mobile chargers, or the Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3 Level 2 chargers, or 240 volt, that you would have at your house, and the new higher powered ones that allow for this 48 amp adapter to let you get the most power out of the charging station for your EV. That's actually a big point of this particular device, and one of the reasons that it costs a little bit more than some of the competition. Now, with that being said, what exactly do we have in this box? Well, let's open it up and have a look. Something that's a little different as compared to the V2L adapter that I reviewed very recently is that in this particular package, you actually get a little bag. Now this bag is something that I find very interesting for storing in the front so that this little adapter doesn't get scratched or get any other things scratched in your front. I would have thought that with the V2L adapter that you would have had a little pouch like this as well, but I guess not. Now we'll set that aside. You've also got a little manual and you get a little installer add or whatever that is, but let's get rid of those. We don't need them. Something that surprised me the first time that I took this out of the box is the fact that the plastic and the, the, the build quality is, is actually quite impressive. It's, it's quite heavy. And I'll put a little video of what this thing weighs up here on the screen. It's kind of surprising. Now it's got the same kind of plastic push button over here and a plastic retaining clip on this. But other than that being plastic, and I wish they were made of metal, this entire thing has some really nice construction. Now something that's really cool is that you've got this little button on the bottom, so when you plug in your Tesla connector, which is nice and small and fits into that connection right there, you've got this that locks it into place. Now it's something that anybody can just press and remove the Tesla connector. It's not like when you've got this plugged into your car and the car locks the whole thing into place. The Tesla end can still be removed. It's not something that can be gotten around, it's just the way the technology is designed. When I read the instruction manual, there's one thing that really made me laugh, and that's the fact that in the instructions, it says to not get this hot and not get it wet. That to me is a little bit ridiculous because if you're plugging your car outside at a hotel, it's not something that's gonna be hidden from the rain. You're not gonna have a little umbrella and hoping your car charges without it raining or whatever. It's a little bit stupid, so I don't quite understand why they would put that. If I'm plugging in my Tesla home charger into this, and then I'm plugging this into my car and it's outside, it's gonna get wet. It's gonna be humid. I don't think that my car is gonna burn down or this is gonna cause a problem. I just thought it was an interesting note that they would put to not get this wet in the instructions. Now to use this particular device and something that you should note that's in the instruction manual is that when you plug the Tesla adapter into the back of this, you're supposed to wait 30 seconds before you plug this into the input of your car. So something to note, it's kind of important, I guess, because it's in the instructions. I didn't quite read the instructions before I tested this and showed you how to use it in the next segment that you're going to see. So it works when you don't wait 30 seconds, but I would suggest following the instructions and not doing like I did and not reading the instructions. It's important to note that when you park your car at a Tesla destination charger, that the charge port in your car might not be on the right side or on the Tesla side. That means that in the case of my EV6, because it's on the passenger side of the vehicle as opposed to like a Tesla where it's on the driver's side, that I had to park really close to the line and really close to the car that was beside me. I actually had to back my car in with my remote key fob. That way I would be able to get out of my car. Now, with that being said, let me just grab the adapter out of my frunk.
And we'll go plug it in and see how it works. Also to note is that not all Tesla destination chargers are made equal. Now in the case of this particular location, I had to park in this spot because there was a car parked in the one beside me. And this particular station happens to have what looks to be a seven or eight foot cable. And that made things really tight to get to my charge port. That's on the passenger side. Now the other charger beside me has a cable that looks to be about 20 feet long, which is normal. Now, with that being said, let's connect this to the adapter. It's quite straightforward. You've got this little locking mechanism underneath that locks into this. Just press and hold the locking mechanism, slide it in, make sure it's in place, doesn't come out. Open your charge port door, and now it's just like plugging in the connector at your regular J1772 charging station. Wait for it to contact. There it is, and charging started, and you're done. The manual says that the adapter works for all EVs. How about the Nissan Area? There you go, it's all good and charging. Did you know that YouTube gave all YouTubers a really terrible gift for the holiday season? It's a change in the way YouTube distributes videos. Did you know that even if you're subscribed to a really friendly, happy, Christmassy kind of channel, well, that doesn't mean that you'll know when our videos come out. That means that we work really hard to make really funny and interesting videos and try and inform you about some really cool things about electric vehicles, but you'll never know unless you click on that notification bell. Yep, that's right, the notification bell has become almost as important as the subscribe button for a YouTuber. That means that they have to dress up in stupid costumes and wear really funny slippers and try and get cats to sit on their laps, but then they scratch them and they decide they don't want to be in their laps and then they have to bleed and then go to the bathroom to wash their hands and... <sighs> Please hit that notification bell and make sure you're subscribed. That means you'll know when our videos come out and we won't have to hassle you with ridiculous videos like this. Happy Holidays! Should you buy the Electron NACS to J1772 adapter and do I recommend it? Well, first off, yes, I recommend this product for a few reasons. The first, like I mentioned earlier, is the build quality is fantastic. And if GM and other manufacturers can trust Electron to build their supercharger to CCS combo adapters, I think we can trust Electron with their other products. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this product is a little bit more expensive than the competition, but it's got a super high build quality and is a 48 amp adapter. And that's a little bit higher than most of the competition in general. I think it's worth it, and it's something that I wouldn't hesitate to recommend to my friends and family. An important note, when you park at a destination charger for a Tesla system, An important note when you charge at a tabernan. <laughs> okay. It's important to note that when you park your car at a It's important to note that when you park your car at a Tesla destination charger, you have to wait for the ventilation to make a shitload of sound so that it ruins this take. And head out of the charge port and head out of the charge port and fuck it all up. <clears throat> <laughs> but not something you can work around and it's not something you can work around yeah you're stuck you're screwed you can't do it and you might as well just not use the charging station also to note is that not all tesla destination chargers tesla destination chargers 